Mankind, offspring of God, lives a stranger in this world, though through how many eons of seeking and strive to make matter his home. Into the grey twilight of materialism there shines from time to time a brilliant ray of divine light penetrating the mist of man's delusions. As the Bhagavad Gita declares, whenever virtue declines and evil is on the rise, I, the Spirit, incarnate myself on earth to restore virtue and to drive out sin. One such divine ray was the great master of yoga, Paramhansa Yogananda. Yogananda was the author of the spiritual classic Autobiography of a Yogi, one of the best-known spiritual works of this age. He was also the founder of Self-Realization Fellowship, a worldwide organization with its headquarters in Los Angeles, California. First coming to America in 1920, he lived 32 years in this country, the first great yogi to make his home in the West. During his lifetime, he was the teacher of thousands. What is this divine ray that he represents? If one were to define something so essentially beyond definition, he would have to begin with love, selfless, divine love. Next would come compassion. In my book, The Path, I wrote, Debbie Mukherjee, a young monk from India, told me of an example he had seen of the universality of Master's love. Master had invited him out for a drive one afternoon. They were on their way home near sundown. Stop the car, Master cried suddenly. He got out and walked back several doors to a small, rather shoddy-looking variety shop. There, to Debbie's astonishment, he selected a number of items, none of them useful. What on earth can he want with all that junk, Debbie marveled. At the front counter, the owner, an elderly woman, added up the price. When Master paid it, she burst into tears. I very badly needed just this sum of money today, she cried. It's near closing time, and I'd almost given up hope of getting it. Bless you, sir. God himself must have sent you to me in my hour of need. Master's quiet smile alone betrayed his knowledge of her difficulty. He offered no word of explanation. The purchases, as Debbie had suspected, served no practical purpose thereafter. The next quality to discern in Yogananda's ray would be joy. As I wrote in the path about Master's chief woman disciple, Sister Ganamata, she attained God through wisdom. My path has been through joy. Devotion would be another quality. Let me continue to quote from the path. A certain visitor once requested a private interview with Master. On the appointed day, he arrived armed with a long list of what he considered to be profound intellectual questions. Love God, Master said in answer to the first of them. The man paused a moment, uncomprehendingly, then shrugged his soldiers and posed his second question. Love God, Master persisted. Nonplussed, the visitor proceeded to the third profound item on his list. Love God, came Master's reply once more, this time sternly. Without another word, he rose, concluding the interview, and left the room. The Master was saying that until the visitor developed love, the doors of true wisdom would remain closed to him. Power. Again I quote, I remember especially how stirred I was by a talk he gave at a garden party in Beverly Hills on July 31st, 1949. Never had I imagined that the power of human speech could be so great. It was the most stirring lecture I have ever heard. This day, he thundered, punctuating every word, marks the birth of a new era. My spoken words are registered in the ether in the Spirit of God, and they shall move the West. Self-realization has come to unite all religions. We must go on, not only those who are here, but thousands of youths must go north, south, east, and west to cover the earth with little colonies, demonstrating that simplicity of living 
plus high thinking lead to the greatest happiness. Deeply I vowed that day to do my utmost to make his words a reality. This is the picture that was taken on that occasion as he chanted Om at the end of his speech to register his vibrations, as he put it, in the ether, in the spirit of God. Another quality of the ray is dispassion. It was the summer of 1950. For months I had been looking forward eagerly to a trip to India. Master was planning to go and had asked me to go with him. But he kept saying he would be leaving only if and when God gave him the definite guidance to go. All I heard in his statement, attached as I was to the idea of going, was the when of it, not the if. In July, finally, he announced that it was God's will that we not make the journey that year. Will we be going another time, Master, I asked. That is in God's hands, he replied, indifferently. I am not inquisitive about these things. What he wants, I do. Not inquisitive? About a trip to India? Mentally, I tightened my belt of expectations, telling myself that it was all the same to me, too. I wasn't completely successful, I'm afraid. Another quality of his ray is wisdom. One day, I was sitting in Master's dictation room, waiting while he worked on a few pages of his new manuscript. While he wrote, his whole mind gravely focused on the task at hand, I gazed at him and thought gratefully how wonderful it was to be his disciple. When he finished his work, he asked me to help him to his feet. Rising, he held my hands for a moment and gazed with joy into my eyes. Just a bulge of the ocean, he said softly. He saw himself ever as only a part of the infinite whole. Cosmic Consciousness One of the most inspiring poems in mystical literature is Master's poem, Samadhi. The poem ends with these soul-expanding words, Gone forever, fitful, flickering shadows of mortal memory. Spotless is my mental sky, below, ahead, and high above. Eternity and I, one united ray, a tiny bubble of laughter, I am become the sea of mirth itself. Another quality of that ray is energy. Again from the path. Louise Royston, an elderly disciple who first met him during his early years in America, described him to me as a man so alive with divine joy that he sometimes actually came running out onto the lecture platform, his long hair streaming out behind him, his orange robe flapping about his body as if with kindred enthusiasm. How is everybody, he would cry. Awake and ready came the eager response in which he led them. How feels everybody? Again the shout, awake and ready. Only in such a charged atmosphere was he willing to talk about God, whom he described as the most dynamic, joy-inspiring reality in the universe. Paramahansa Yogananda was a shining star in a global family of spiritual souls, the lineage of which spans many centuries. To such mighty families, I wrote in the path, is given the real task of guiding the human race, not in the way governments do by ordinances, but by subtler spiritual influence. An essence of the ray Yogananda represented is the protection it affords those who seek guidance from it. Sir, I said to Master one day, after you are gone, will you be as near to us as you are now? To those who think me near, he replied, I will be near. Master used to tell us, all of Krishna's soldiers were like Krishna. Those who embrace the ray that he came to bring into this world take on its qualities in their own lives. Above all, the essence of what that ray has to offer mankind is God consciousness. Millions, Master used to say, will find God through this work. The Shankaracharya of Kanchipuram, the spiritual leader of hundreds of thousands of Indians, said to me, as a bright light shining in the midst of darkness, so was Yogananda's presence in this world. Such a great soul comes on earth only rarely when there is a real need among men.